I'd like to thank uh, Noel Rose and the rest of the organizing uh, committee for inviting me. Uh, most of the time I present our work at, uh, on immunology to clinical audiences, so this is a little bit more intimidating presenting it to real uh, immunologists, but uh, I look forward to your comments. What I'd like to uh, discuss um, in the next uh, 25 minutes or so is the, the problem that we have initially introduced, the problem of, of kidney ischemia reperfusion injury. And I would like to uh, propose to you uh, that lymphocytes uh, are an early mediator of ischemia reperfusion injury, that lymphocytes are not only de deleterious, but they have a modulatory role in this condition. And uh, you can actually find regulatory T cells um, in a normal kidney. And then these regulatory T cells actually facilitate and uh, help in the repair from ischemia reperfusion injury. And there might be some very specifically regulated mechanisms uh, that in turn control how Tregs traffic into the injured kidney. Now, um, ischemia reperfusion injury is a big problem uh, for patients uh, who are getting uh, kidney transplants, particularly those who are getting it from a cadaver or a deceased donor, because they have to be transported. And almost all of them get some degree of ischemia reperfusion injury. Um, of course, it's also very important in other diseases such as stroke and myocardial infarctions and native kidney ischemia. But uh, for our practice, which is mostly uh, in transplant, uh, it's, it's a very, very common problem, particularly in Maryland, uh, where we have a high uh, sort of burden of uh, end-stage renal disease and not that many local donors, so we import a lot of organs. And there's no specific therapy uh, for ischemia reperfusion injury. When you look at the kidney in terms of pathophysiology uh, of, the, um, of, of injury, you can sort of traditionally break down events that are occurring at the level of the microvasculature, which you see on the left is sort of the red and the, and the light blue, uh, and then events at the tubule, uh, which are involved in terms of collecting the urine uh, that has been filtered and processed. And, uh, for a number of years, we've been focusing at the, in the microvasculature um, of the uh, nephron. And as you, most of you know, there are about a million of these in each kidney that make up the, uh, the kidney functional unit. Now, in the traditional way of looking at injury and wound from ischemia reperfusion, there are a number of cells that are traditionally um, have been implicated. And these include neutrophils and dendritic cells and NK cells and, um, and of course, important things such as complement um, and macrophages. So what I'd like to propose now is that the lymphocyte actually uh, should be included uh, in terms of uh, the, the injury response um, in ischemia reperfusion injury. So um, our lab first started to work on this in the uh, early 90s, actually. Uh, I had spent a few years uh, trying to do gene therapy uh, for kids with uh, adhesion molecule deficiency, and I, I think people are still trying to do gene therapy. But, uh, but I learned a little bit about integrins, and we started to make some antibodies uh, to some of these uh, molecules, CD11 and uh, some of the selectins, and we, we applied them to a model of ischemia reperfusion injury, and we found that they were very protective in terms of the kidney function and in terms of the structure. And we assumed, we and others assumed at the time, that this was purely working by neutrophils. Um, because neutrophils were really the cells that people thought were very important in early ischemia reperfusion injury, and by blocking uh, the adhesion molecules, that's how they were working. Uh, one of my um, uh, fellows in 1993 did some head-to-head -head comparisons, and he induced neutropenia in a group of rats with ischemia reperfusion injury, and it was really not protective in our hands. Um, However, in another group, he gave CD11, CD18 antibodies or ICAM-1 antibodies, and they were highly protective. And we really couldn't figure that out. We tried to get it published, and we really had no idea why the antibodies to CD11, CD18, or the ICAM pathway, which was involved in supposedly in neutrophils, was very protective, but in our model, the neutropenia was not. And we started to start to think about it a little bit more and do some experiments. Um, now, if you look at um, a human kidney biopsy uh, that's having ischemic injury, you really don't see very much. Even a kidney that's hardly functioning uh, around the cortex, when you biopsy, there's really a little epithelial damage, but you don't see much. When you go a little bit deeper, actually, in the microvasculature, 
the area between the outer cortex and, um, sorry, the cortex and the medulla, there are some areas in the microvasculature where you'll see some cells sludging up. And when you stain those cells, you'll actually see some lymphocytes um, in there. This is by uh, one of the biopsies that we did um, in a patient with ischemic injury. The brown color is the T cells um, that are in the cortical medullary junction of the kidney. When you do an EM, actually, you not only see polymorphonuclear cells, but you also see some, more, some mononuclear cells as well. So in human kidney biopsies, which are very difficult to do in a, an acutely ill native uh, kidney, but you can do safer in a transplanted kidney, you do see some areas where there are some microvascular plugs, and there are mononuclear cells and T cells. The other thing that uh, we started to find out, and of course uh, those who traditionally work on these pathways would already knew about it, but a lot of these antibodies that we were using against uh, CD11, CD18, or LFA1, or ICAM1, or selectins, also could potentially work on antigen-presenting cells and T cells. So there could be other cell populations that we were inadvertently blocking and getting a protective effect on early injury responses, even in the absence of an alloantigen. Uh, we really didn't really have a mechanism initially because of the traditional antigen-dependent um, activation through signal 1 and signal 2 or antigen-independent activation of T cells, uh, which is less studied. But there is a gamish of, of oxygen-free radicals and, and cytokines and chemokines in the milieu of, uh, of an injured kidney during transport. So we decided to do some direct studies, and we used a mouse uh, developed by TACMAC, uh, who was in Toronto, and he generously gave us uh, these mice. And these were deficient in CD4 or C and CD8. And uh, what we did, we clamped the renal artery uh, in the mice, and then 24 hours later, we saw the rise in serum creatinine. Serum creatinine uh, is normally made by muscle, and uh, the clearance of serum creatinine, creatinine by the blood is a rough indicator of kidney function. And if you look um, at the gray bar uh, on top, you see the rise in serum creatinine at 24 hours, and then the plateau phase. And then the lower bar, which is the, uh, the purple color, you see mice that were CD4 and CD8 deficient, uh, we had an attenuated rise in serum creatinine as well as a faster recovery. So at least in the CD4, CD8 knockout mice, uh, there was an attenuation uh, of their ischemia reperfusion injury. But that's only one mouse strain, and we wanted to study this a little bit uh, further. Um, so one of my um, uh, postdoctoral fellows, um, Melissa Byrne, what she did, she looked at the athymic uh, nude mice, and um, that's in the um, sort of pink bar at the bottom. And uh, she did the clamping of the renal arteries and then released them after about 30 minutes and looked at the rise in creatinine. And as opposed to the control C57 black mice, which is sort of the, I guess she chose sort of an aqua greenish color for that, there was a significant protection. Um, at that point, uh, uh, we did the adoptive transfer about three weeks before the ischemia, we took T cells from normal mice and we put them in the athymic nude mice, and we were able to, that's the yellow bar, we were able to fully restore, uh, that is, the protection. So it was indeed uh, the deficiency of T cells that was significantly protecting the kidney. And uh, all of us, uh, we only need about 10% of kidney function to survive. At about 20% uh, or so, one thinks seriously about dialysis or transplant. So if you get a 30% or so protection in kidney function, that's very significant uh, in terms of functionally and the implications, whether to be on dialysis or not, or needing a transplant or not. When we looked at the pathology, um, A is on the far left is the normal uh, mouse histology of the kidney. B is 24 hours after ischemia, and you see a lot of the loss of architecture. You see cast formation, dilatation of the tubules, apoptosis. C is in the T cell deficient mouse, the athymic nude mouse. And then when we put T cells back into those mice, uh, to another set of these mice and do the ischemia, you can see a marked uh, worsening of the histologic structure. And again, there's very few T cells, but those very few T cells are able to somehow uh, enable the full expression of the ischemia reperfusion injury, both functionally and in terms of histologically. We looked at mice that were CD4 deficient and CD8 deficient, 
and it appeared that it was mostly the CD4 deficient mice that were most protected. So there was something most likely in CD4 T cells uh, that enabled um, the full expression of reperfusion injury. Well, uh, at that point, we started to do some depletion studies in wild-type mice. We tried to deplete CD4 cells. We were not very successful in protection. We tried to deplete CD8 cells, and we were not, or T cells by separately. But then when we reduced T cells to very, very, very low numbers in the mouse by a combination approach, we were able to get protection in kidney function. So it appeared that you really needed very, very few T cells um, to get this full expression of injury, again, by uh, depletion studies. Now, this was in the isolated clamp model, and sometimes you see a patient in shock, they have a car accident, they come in. Uh, nowadays, uh, there's such a big a shortage of organ donors, so uh, people who have heart attacks or people who have cardiac death are potential uh, donors as well. Uh, this is from one of my uh, patients about seven years ago, uh, uh, whose um, kidney we took from this donor. Um, and this is at the Organ Procurement Agency, which is downtown. And so we turned off the uh, pressure support on a patient, and you could see the drop in the blood pressure. And so that patient basically uh, was brain dead and now cardiac death. And then we took that patient's organs. There was an obligate time of warm ischemia because you need to make sure that the body's not going to revive on its own. We usually wait about five or eight minutes or so. There's certain laws about that. And then we take those organs. But there's a lot of warm ischemic damage. So this is whole body ischemia. So we set up a model of warm ischemic injury uh, to the whole body. And what we did, we took mice and we gave them potassium chloride uh, in their IJ. As soon as you give high doses of potassium, the heart stops. And then, bam, you get this big drop in blood pressure. And about 10 minutes later, we do CPR on the mice, and we ventilate the mice, and we give them fluids and epinephrine, just like you would CPR. And we can resuscitate about 60 or 70 percent of the mice. And all those mice get a significant amount of ischemia reperfusion um, to the kidney. Uh, as well as in other organs as well, because this is whole body ischemia. <clears throat> I learned this model from um, uh, Dick Traceman, who was an anesthesiology uh, researcher here. And, and what we did, we studied those in the T-cell deficient mice, and even with 10 minutes ischemia of the whole body, as opposed to 30 minutes when you clamp it, you see a huge rise in serum creatinine at about 48 hours or so. Uh, in the sham operated, that's the red bar, in the sham operated at the bottom, uh, where we don't give potassium chloride. There's no rise in, potassium, in uh, creatinine. But the kidney function is significantly protected uh, when you use T-cell deficient mice. So this concept of T-cells being important in the full expression of ischemia reperfusion injury is important not only in the isolated clamp model, but in whole body uh, ischemia or shock or cardiac arrest. Uh, now, uh, this work has since been... Uh, verified and extended uh, in a much more elegant fashion by a number of other groups uh, to show that ischemia reperfusion injury is important in the lung, that is, in terms of the, t the role of the T cell, um, in terms of the lung, uh, the liver, and more recently, uh, the brain as well. Um, so somehow T cells, uh, this finding uh, that T cells are playing a role, though it's counterintuitive in traditional immunology, uh, seems to be applicable uh, for various organs uh, in addition to the kidney. We wanted to start to look at some potential mechanisms of this, and one of the possibilities was that interferon gamma, uh, which is produced by uh, what used to be called, nowadays there are a lot more subtypes, but the Th1 subtype could be important uh, in this process. So uh, one of my um, postdoc fellows, not Dr. Naoko Yokoda, she did some studies where she looked at stat uh, four deficient mice that were uh, deficient in this uh, STAT4 pathway in T cells. Um, and the, in, in a bulb C mice background, because that's where we got the mice from Boston, is that the, um, the STAT4 mice were indeed protected, which is the pink bar in the bottom. Uh, but to my surprise, she did some studies on STAT6 knockout mice, where the STAT6 pathway is abnormal and you have problems with IL-4 and IL-10. They, they were worse. So we started to think of the possibility 
could the lymphocyte, and we did some adoptive transfer experiments to make sure these were indeed from uh, lymphocytes, uh, could there be the possibility that some, there were some T cell products that were not only bad in ischemic injury but potentially protective if you knocked out the STAT6 pathway and you got actually a worsening? So that was confusing to us, uh, but I guess it just reveals the complexity of the immune system, um, which we know in other things. Um, we then had a uh, postdoctoral fellow from Peru, Dr. Dolores Ascon, and she set up a very nice technique in our lab where you could isolate very, very small numbers of lymphocytes uh, from the kidney. And we thought that by looking at these very small numbers of lymphocytes, we could better understand how, um, the, uh, how the lymphocytes are working uh, in the kidney. And what we did, we looked at one time point about 24 hours out where we didn't see much increase in T cells in the ischemic kidney. Uh, but when you looked at the T cells in the ischemic kidney comp compared to the sham operated kidney, those T cells were making a large amount of TNF and interferon gamma. So those T cells, though there, there weren't very many of them, were really, uh, uh, really driven in terms of their pro-inflammatory molecules. And potentially that could be one way that so few cells were doing so much, uh, perhaps by releasing factors and then modulating other pathways or other cells. So one of the reviewers for her paper wanted us to see, well, maybe if you took the cells out of the kidney that, during injur injury and you transferred them to another one, you'd get worse ischemia. And that's what we predicted. So 24 hours after ischemia, we took the lymphocytes out of the kidney and we put them into another kidney, another animal, and we did ischemia. But to my surprise and counter to my expectations, those animals were protected from ischemia. So taking the lymphocytes from the injured animals out and putting them in another animal actually was protective. And uh, in the same year, uh, Journal of Immunology, we also did that to splenocytes from the same animals, and we found those to be protective. So, uh, there was something going on in those lymphocytes that could actually confer a protection from subsequent ischemia reperfusion injury uh, when you put them into an animal uh, that was naive. So more and more we started to find this very complex, that the T cells were involved in early injury. We didn't know what the antigen was. We didn't know what the stimulus is. And now the lymphocytes we were finding could be protective in injury, depending on the timing. We started to look at normal kidneys a little bit more. We flushed them out a lot. And then we found actually that normal kidneys have a population of FOXP3, um, CD4, CD25, regulatory cells. And we flushed them and flushed them. And we didn't expect that there would be resident uh, Tregs in the kidney. Uh, we also found some other very interesting cells, like uh, this double negative cell that was CD3 positive, CD4 negative, CD8 negative. And we didn't know what these lymphocytes could potentially be doing in a normal kidney. So with our data about this sort of uh, positive, uh, sort of a deleterious role of T cells, and then maybe a positive role or helpful, uh, and we found these normal T regs in the kidney, uh, we thought that maybe T regs could be helpful uh, in the disease process. Now, most of the time when we see a patient uh, we don't have the luxury of seeing the patient before the ischemia. Usually if there's a car accident or there's a uh, catastrophic incident in the operating room, they call us um, after the fact. Okay, there's already been ischemia, the kidney's damaged, can you dialyze the patient, can you somehow support the patient? Um, so what we decide to do is change our focus a little bit from protection or pretreatment, but is there some way we could enhance repair of the ischemic kidney. And that there's no therapeutics for that. We did a study on that about three years ago. It was published in the New England Journal where we started to do more dialysis. And we still had a 50% mortality, uh, no matter what maneuver we did in people with established uh, ischemic reperfusion injury in native kidneys. So it's really uh, a, 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 an area that needs work. So with this, uh, we recently did some work where we said, do these T regs go into the kidney during reperfusion injury? Do they increase during repair? And what we found actually that at three days and 10 days after ischemia, there's actually a significant increase in T regs trafficking into the kidney. 
post ischemia. So not only do you see Tregs in normal kidney, you actually see them increase significantly at different points after reperfusion. Uh, and there's again, there's very few of those. You know, they're just when you slice the kidney and you do stain them, uh, you you see them, but they're very few. And I think that's why this this story has been missed uh, for so long because there's so few of them relative to how many epithelial cells and other cells. And then what we did is we pleaded during establish, we waited for the animals, the mice, to develop acute kidney injury or ischemia reperfusion injury, and we waited 24 hours for that to be established, and then we started depleting Tregs uh, with an antibody, PC61, which is an established antibody to deplete CD25 cells. And what we found is actually after about 10 days, the epithelial cells of the kidney uh, were much more damaged. And we had a blinded uh, reviewer, an expert renal pathologist, Dr. Lorraine uh, Rakusen and also Serena Bagnascu, look at these. And they're actually, uh, there was a lot more tubular epithelial cell injury after we depleted the uh, Tregs. And when we looked at KI67, which is a proliferative uh, marker for epithelial cells, you had decreased proliferation of the epithelial cells. So during established ischemia reperfusion injury, the depletion of Tregs worsened the uh, epithelial cell um, uh, structure and also decreased proliferation. We wanted to see one, what could be the mechanism, so we looked at uh, CD4 cells that were trafficking into the kidney. And when we did Treg depletion, they actually started to make more TNF-alpha. So the, at least the CD4 cells that we're still trafficking were making more uh, of this. Now what about the other way? What about during infusion? So we waited during established ATN in another, or ischemic reperfusion injury in another group of mice, and we infused Tregs. Again, this is during established disease. And what we were able to find that at 10 days and later on, there was an acceleration of repair. Um, the tubular epithelial injury in the left column you see a protection in the infusion group, that is infusion of Tregs, and the uh, epithelial cells proliferated a lot more by KI67 staining. So these complementary works, depletion of Tregs worsened the repair, and infusion of Tregs accelerated repair of epithelial cells. So um, somehow, these Tregs were, and again, very small numbers, were having a significant beneficial effect uh, on the post-ischemia reperfusion kidney. What we found is in the kidney uh, that had the Treg infusion, the T cells, that is the CD4 and CD8 cells, both of them, uh, the CD4 cells made less TNF and less interferon gamma, and the CD8 cells made less interferon gamma. So one possible way, though I think there are a lot of possible mechanisms, but one possible way is by decreasing the pro-inflammatory uh, production or of other cells. So I'm, I'm sure there are other things. So more recently, we've been trying to see how do those Tregs go in those kid get to the reperfused kidney uh, during re uh, repair, and can we do something about it? And this is some recent work done by uh, Yu Hong Tao, uh, who's a visiting professor from. Szechuan and uh, Beth um, uh, Higsby, who's a, a technician in our lab. And what uh, we, we were looking at the different um, chemokine receptors that could be important in Treg and for, uh, in terms of the reagents available and what could be novel, we picked CCR6, CCR7, CCR5, CCR2, and CD103. And I recently read a paper um, by Jonathan Bromberg uh, in Immunity that these might be potentially important in islet cell uh, trafficking uh, of Tregs. So uh, I chose these, and uh, we wanted to see if these would be important in Treg trafficking to our ischemia reperfusion model. We basically uh, took the kidney, clamped the renal artery, um, and then looked at different time points. And we initially wanted to see what the expression was of uh, these chemokine and other trafficking receptors on Treg. We did find again in another person's hands, which is always reassuring uh, when, uh, when it is a PI to make sure different people in the lab uh, reproduce the same results. We did again at the far left find an increase in Treg trafficking to the, in the reperfused kidney. 
uh, but not so much. There was a little blip in the blood but re and a little increase in the spleen and draining lymph node, but most of it was all in the kidney. The Tregs were going in the kidney. This is unpublished work uh, recently being done. And we did find that in the post-ischemic kidney, there was an increase uh, on the Tregs of CCR5, CCR7, uh, and all of this, uh, everything that we looked at, CCR6 and CD103, these were all increased. Uh, in the blood, there was also an increase on the Tregs, but at a different time course. The time course of expression in the blood was different from the time course of expression in the kidney. And then we wanted to see, well, they were increased in expression, but did that really affect trafficking? So what we did, we did, uh, we recently, we bought some knockout mice that were deficient in each of those um, receptors, and we wanted to see, did the knockout then affect the trafficking, and that in turn did trafficking affect repair. So we found that actually deficiency of CD103, uh, CCR2, CCR5, and CCR6, all those, they significantly impacted trafficking of the Treg into the post-ischemic kidney, but not CCR7, even though CCR7 increased on the Treg. We then looked what was the effect of the decrease in trafficking on the pathology, and actually it was only CCR6 deficiency which worsened the pathology. So uh, it, it appeared that though there, the, these receptors increase on many of the Tregs, that absence of those receptors affects trafficking. It was only in terms of the CCR6 pathway was there a causal relationship between the deficiency, the trafficking, and ultimately the organ dysfunction. And we found, we also looked at uh, proliferation with KI67, and those effects were a little bit, uh, again, more diffuse, such as, that is, many of the trafficking receptors were involved in proliferation, CD103, CCR2, CCR5, CCR6. So it appears there was a, a lot of redundancy in this pathway, that is, in terms of Treg trafficking. So many different receptors could play a role. Um, and it's a lot more complex than, originally, than I originally suspected in terms of we didn't find like one pathway that could definitely, if we targeted that, we could alter Treg trafficking uh, into the kidney. So the model that we've developed over the last few years, um, and a number of other groups have confirmed this and they of course extended it. I, I do want to mention there was a, a paper in Nature Medicine about a year and a half ago, the, the, actually the same time our paper came out in kidney on repair from ischemic injury, looking at stroke and Treg manipulation, uh, again, not during repair, but early, um, actually worsened stroke. So similarly, uh, which is ischemia reperfusion to the brain, it, it appears that Tregs are important in that pathway. So we believe that early in injury, there's a microvascular plug and during reperfusion. T cells are involved in that plug and somehow prevent reflow. But during the course of ischemic injury, there are resident cells in the kidney, uh, T cells, regulatory cells, and others that interplay with this. And more recently, we've been studying lymph nodes. And there's particularly one lymph node where the kidney drains from. And we're finding a lot of very interesting events in terms of very rapid crosstalk. And we think some of the processes to understand how lymphocytes could be more important uh, are occurring in that one draining lymph node. So in summary, I'd like to propose that not only classic sort of innate immune cells or mediators participate in acute injury uh, from ischemia reperfusion, uh, but also T cells, which are not conventionally thought to be the case. It's mostly the CD4 cell. I would like to propose that they have a dual role in ischemia reperfusion injury. Um, and the T regs are found in normal kidney, and they increase after reperfusion. And the T regs can mediate repair from established injury, again, not pre-injury, which people frequently look at, but during established injury, the Treg could potentially um, accelerate repair. I don't know the mechanisms, but perhaps through solid mediators. Uh, and there are specific trafficking receptors that mediate how Tregs go into the kidney, uh, but there's a lot of redundancy. I don't think, at least we haven't found a single thing that's just involved in trafficking, and, and then, of course, their ultimate function. And I think Tregs and lymphocytes in general, but Tregs are an exciting novel, uh, potential novel target to improve outcomes in uh, 
acute kidney injury and ischemia reperfusion injury to, to other organs. Thank you. Actually, so uh, the question is uh, that uh, David's uh, team has found that uh, the uh, Tregs infiltrating make IL-17. Or does that CCR6 positive? The CCR6 positive ones make IL-17. Yeah. You know, we've, uh, this is, every time we go, this is like a new area for us. So uh, we've just been looking at trafficking so far and what cells go there and everything. But I think that's, uh, that's a great question is uh, what those specific cells are making. Do you think that somehow these small numbers of cells could be regulating other cells through IL-17? Is that a, a, a likely mechanism? I have no idea. They tend to be low in the blood, but where they work in terms of specific site of injury, they yeah. need to be attracted to certain sites and have a strong influence there. Just in the EA model, there's a, a great deal of that gap in the and Nile 7 institution by the right with inflammation, so we have to it. I just got one. <laughs> um, you said you, did, you weren't sure about what kind of specificity you see for cells as. I'm wondering whether the specificity is almost irrelevant. I was wondering if you would do the future uh, with the fusion of the ischemic injury model with the TCR transgenic, which I would reference is over here, which is 100% committed to some irrelevant antigen, like that woman, whether you would see that kind of thing. So uh, done such an I presented this about eight, nine years ago, and uh, um, I was uh, actually um, at a clinical meeting, and uh, Mark Jenkins from Minnesota was in the audience and asked the same question. So uh, we did that experiment. We published it two years ago in Journal of Immunology. Uh, Shailesh Saputi is the first author. And um, we actually found that uh, the TCR receptor specificity is playing some role in this process. Um, again, so I don't really understand how a lymphocyte could be important in playing a role in early injury, having not seen an antigen before, from the way I was trained in immunology. But anyhow, that's what we're finding. I, yeah. I, okay, come on, one more question, and then we're going to this way. Is it possible to replicate some of these effects by injecting, say, IL-10 or I think uh, it could uh, injecting IL-10 or uh, TGF uh, play a role. I think, yes, actually injecting IL-10 in this model, um, this has been done by uh, Robert Starr at the NIH, that's protective in this model. I don't know if anyone has injected TGF. So, but I think one of the things that I think that's a very good point, but how would we know it's the TGF or IL-10 made by Tregs? Or the lymphocytes. Could there be other sources of uh, those cytokines besides the lymphocytes? I think we can now have to break. Uh, Dr. Rose, you want to make a 